Turn off the tourist track and you'll soon see the work of poachers. Today it's a lost elephant calf searching for his mother. She's still a baby. Rangers found him here this morning, dehydrated and very frightened. They fear poachers shot his mother last night. Distraught, he collapses in the dirt. All we can do to help is give him water and a hand to suckle. Well, he's just exhausted probably from looking for his mother all night and obviously very distressed. But this is the reality of what's happening all over Africa now. Adult elephants are being slaughtered for their ivory to satisfy the demand for Asian trinkets and the orphans are being left to die. It is the worst threat Africa's elephants have ever faced. Across the continent, nearly 40,000 are being killed for their ivory tusks each year. In Tanzania, just across the border from here, it's estimated more than 60 are poached every day. In this story, we'll take you inside one of the greatest environmental crimes on the planet, as we take a dangerous journey into the ivory underworld. Ah, very good. That's good. That's very good, yes. We'll go there with an Australian who's now the world's top ranger. She's suckling on my fingers. It's absolutely a war. Um, it's an untold war. And we'll hear of veteran wildlife campaigners' fears that we're very close to a world without wild elephants. Unless something's done about it and the demand can be checked and the ivory banned totally, uh, then I think elephants could disappear in the next 20 years. If you want to see wild herds before they disappear, Tarangiri National Park in the north of Tanzania is as good a place as any. With proper patrols, it's so far managing to keep poachers at bay. See all those elephants down there? Mm -hmm. 40, a big herd. 40, 50 elephants down there, where you can see. Ah. All spread out all the way up the river there. Pratik Patel grew up in a safari camp here before it was even a national park. So it's one of the, the healthier populations here in Tanzania, is mm -hmm. Um we, we estimate about 3,000 elephants in this park at the moment. When you were a boy, would you see bigger herds than this? Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, I remember uh, herds of up to 7,000 uh, in the old days. 7,000 in, 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 7, in, in this park. Yeah. The Tarangi River is a refuge in this park and so we have in the dry season all the concentration around the river and in the, in the wet season they disperse and, and that's where the concern comes in is because that's where we start losing uh, elephants. Elephants don't know where parks start or end. When they roam outside them, they're at the mercy of poachers. Uh, these two older females were the first two that were shot, um, that one and, and this one here. And there's a young one that was shot, who was wounded, who ran into the thickets and is further down in the back. Pratik now runs photographic safaris in Tanzania to showcase its wildlife. But never more common sight is dead elephants, sometimes entire families killed by automatic gunfire. And then the other one is just uh, 10 metres away. 10 metres away. There's total four. So this was one family. They're just moving slowly, they shot. To be honest, they didn't even have any, anything substantial ivory on them. You know, uh, hardly 10 kilos of ivory, you know, each. Um, so there wasn't a lot there. In just the past three years, Tanzania has lost 40% of its elephants. Most of the tusks have ended up in China. Ivory carvings, jewellery, even chopsticks are a status symbol for China's booming middle class. It's been illegal to harvest ivory for sale since 1989, but the surge in demand from China has made a mockery of the international ban. They 
getting all the ivory from Africa from the field into containers, into international waters, into Hong Kong and China. It's a well-organized syndicate and, and they have billions of dollars. Unfortunately, conservation doesn't have a thousand dollars, but you know, they have billions uh, trickling through. It's just like cocaine uh, and heroin. So how do you fight them? Pratik employs Maasai tribesmen on his properties to try to protect wildlife from poachers. But as brave as they are, and fewer braver than the Maasai, they are hopelessly outgunned. See, this, are, this is an example of a not a very good, uh, good quality rifle. Yeah. It'll still fire, you know, it's still fire, there's, there's no question about it. But not say to the eye. Unfortunately, as private sector game scouts, you're not allowed to carry automatic weapons. Uh -huh. But they're up against guys with automatic weapons. They're against guys with automatic weapons, with armored piercing bullets, so the, the fight is not fair. <laughs> One ranger, Australian Sean Wilmore, is determined to turn this battle around. He's just been elected president of the International Ranger Federation at its World Congress in Tanzania. If we're going to get serious about conservation and serious about supporting the rangers on the front line of that, that battle, we need to support, support them, we need to supply them with equipment, we need to train them properly, and we need to pay them respect. Now the work starts. Now the work starts for this new IEC. A few years ago, Sean sold everything he owned to raise funds for rangers in environmental hotspots. Um, I'll be trying to attract sponsorship, so you'll be hearing from me. He called his charity the Thin Green Line, in recognition that rangers are effectively in a war with poachers. A round of applause for Tanzania. It's absolutely a war. Um, it's an untold war. And uh, we've lost over a thousand rangers that we know of. Um, and the likely figure is probably three to five thousand rangers killed in the last 10 to 15 years. It's worldwide. It's worldwide. And um, Africa is certainly the hotspot of that. To see what's fueling this war, we're heading to the centre of ivory smuggling, Tanzania's capital, Dar es Salaam. To expose the challenge facing rangers, Sean has agreed to come with us. Rangers themselves can't stop the ivory trade. Uh, rangers are at the pointy end, dodging bullets and trying to take down poachers. But it's the demand at the other end that needs to be stopped if we're going to stop the ivory trade. This is one of Africa's main ports and the gateway to some of its biggest wildlife reserves. Every year, customs officials seize up to 10 tonnes of smuggled ivory. But that's thought to be a tiny fraction of what passes through the port. Working through a well-connected contact, it doesn't take us long to find black market traders. OK, we've just heard that some ivory sellers are prepared to meet us. Now, our go-between tells us they're a little bit suspicious because we're not Chinese, but they're going to suss us out and see if they're willing to do business. We meet them in a cafe near the city centre, filming with concealed cameras. Our cover story is that I'm buying for a Chinese-Cambodian businessman and Sean is my security. Now we, we are planning to leave on a flight tomorrow afternoon. Yes, so what we're looking at is not to buy at this stage, yeah. want to establish a relationship. We're all in business, we know business risk. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to be comfortable with each other. Yeah. Eventually they agree to show us some ivory in return for money. Yeah. For the time, I'll give them 100, I'll give them another 200. Oh, yeah, just to show that we're serious. You don't even have to give me a receipt. <laughs> they refuse to say where they're taking us. We just have to get in their car and hope for the best. I'll get in the back. So, guys, just yeah. before we go in, yeah. I just want to confirm we're only dealing with you two and not dealing with other people. No, here I was just I you two. No, one or two. Only one. Yeah, here, one here, so. is my, my house. Okay, yeah, no one else. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Thank you. Just doing my job. That's all. Yeah. Okay. 
They tell us their price is $200 a kilogram and they assure us they'll have no trouble filling big orders. Say, say 100 kg. Just one day. Just one day? One day. Really? You have a stop They take us down a dirt road to see the sample. It's a suitcase full of ivory tusks. Oh, very good. That's good. That's very good, yes. Well, look at that, you... Uh... This one has to be... That's fantastic. This is a one good thing. Yeah, yeah. This is this. Yep. Sure, sure. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, we cut them up. That's okay, we, we, we yes. cut them up. We don't yes. need the big ones. That, yes. Yes. That's, that one there is about perfect size. That's a great size for a, yeah. for a backpack. Yeah. Yeah. Can we take a photo? All right, I'll, I'll just take a... Okay, I'll take a... You stay out. Yes. Yeah. We just wanted to show Cambodian buyer. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. Okay. That's very good. Yeah, they like ivory a lot. On the way back, they tell us their business is almost exclusively with Chinese. They like to make a business with the Chinese people. Sure. Yeah. Because yeah. Chinese people, even when you get a problem, you cannot say anything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they be quiet. Oh, yeah, yeah, quiet, quiet. Well, we are yeah. similar. We're, but, you know, we are Mzungu, but we are uh, quiet Mzungu too. sometimes a problem. Yeah, well, we are different Mzungu. And, uh, that's why people in Tanzania don't want to make a business with Mzungu. Yeah. Surprisingly, rich Mzungu, or white people, can harvest ivory legally. Tanzania is still selling permits for elephant hunts. Under an exemption to the international ban, they're allowed to keep their trophies. Every animal you have to pay, a lion you have to pay four, five thousand dollars. You've got elephant, you pay for something from ten, fifteen thousand dollars to mm -hmm. twenty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Mosin Abdallah, better known by his nickname Shaney, owns the lion's share of hunting concessions around national parks. This is uh, the, tea, uh, the tusk from hippo. Elephants often roam into them, but Shaney says they only shoot old bulls and other approved animals. The lion is a very aggressive animal. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to confront him and to hunt. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't hide behind and, and shoot him from the back. But so that, that you shot that one, did you? Yeah, that, yeah. that, that one was shot by me in 1995. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. long time ago. And the one behind you? This one behind me is, was shot by my son. Mm -hmm. I bought him a 21-day license where he shot okay. this lion. Africa's Okavango Delta. It's where we've come to stalk the world's largest beast. Elephant hunts are openly advertised in South Africa, Botswana and Zimbabwe too, often claiming they just cull excess stock. No, you know, in the 30s we had, you know, a few million elephant. Today in Africa as a continent we don't have more than 450, maybe 500,000 elephant. You know, so can we continue uh, hunting our elephants? I think the answer is no, we, it has to stop. Uh, it's not sustainable. Shaney insists hunting is actually good for elephants because much of the money rich hunters pay to kill them goes back to national parks to protect them. The day you don't hunt wildlife, the wildlife will be gone. Really? Definitely, because it's me, the hunter, who pays for conservation of this. Really? Shaney the hunter was until recently on the board of Tanzania's national parks, despite a somewhat controversial reputation. In 1996, a presidential inquiry accused him of corruption, claiming he'd used bribery to obtain hunting concessions and evade tax. The spectre of corruption makes poaching a highly sensitive issue here. We were unable to film with Tanzania's government rangers. So to see the battle firsthand, we head back across the border into southern Kenya, where rangers like Wilson Selenja are on the environmental front line. Yeah, I came across uh, poachers a few days ago, and actually they are armed. They have an uh, 458 rifle because we collected the cartridge uh, from the carcass uh, because they killed three elephants. Now you've been shot at by poachers? Yeah, I was shot, but I ran away also because <laughs> I, was not, uh, I was not armed.
poachers aren't the elephant's only predators. As the growing population spreads deeper into the bush, farmers are now killing them too. So we're very close to the village. They're just in the background there. So this, uh, yeah. just where you can see right now. Yeah. So they what? They don't like the elephants coming into their farms. They don't. Or? They don't no, they, they don't. Are, they do through their crops. Yeah. Only one spear wound right through the liver. Yeah. Causes poisoning and then they die. Oh, okay. and they die. Just one spear. That's what, only oh. one. How does this make you guys feel as rangers? It's terrible, but you know it's life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, these are challenges of our job. Rangers. Wilson works for a private conservation group called Big Life that does what it can to protect a huge wildlife concession. Yeah, uh, this is the house. The metal uh, shelters in this field camp are at least lion proof. Yeah, it's lion proof. No lion can get in, except snakes. But the rangers always need more. We need food, mosquito nets, mosquito, mosquito nets, some more equipment, uh, some more equipment, and a soccer ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The rangers can spend weeks in the bush on patrol. They're going out there trying to stop elephant poachers unarmed, without the proper equipment, uh, without ration packs sometimes, without mosquito nets even, uh, or something to sleep on. So it's everything from the basics, from the, from the boots right through to the unarmed combat training. We need to do a lot more. Today they're taking us to see snares the telltale sign that poachers are targeting a path. This will stick on the elephant or rhino. Uh -huh. Front leg or the back leg. Then uh -huh. it will keep like cutting it, cutting until it gets worse and worse. So in a very painful way. Very, mm -hmm. yeah. Both Kenya and Tanzania have vowed to stamp out poaching, but the potential profits are corrupting both politics and law enforcement. Make you swing around, okay? Here we go. There we go. Back in Tanzania, Pratik Patel and his family have paid a high price for speaking out. Two days before we met, his wife Sonia was run off the road by a gang of motorcyclists. They could have killed me. Yeah, I almost lost. They drove me down. The car rolled over. She was lucky to escape with cuts and bruises. She's convinced it was a warning. Yes, because uh, two, three weeks ago as well, I've had these notes, you know, wherever I've parked my car, I've had these notes on the windscreen that will get him, you know, tell him to stop doing what he's doing. So I've lived in Africa all my life. I came to Africa when I was three years old. I, this, I've never experienced anything like this before. Do you think it's worth continuing to? For sure, for sure, yeah. Now it makes us more stronger, and we feel very, very strongly about this, and we will go ahead with it. I don't mind getting shot at, you know. It's not the first time that I've been in, in a hairy situation, uh, being in the bush. Mm. But um, I think now they're trying to get to me through, you know, going after my, targeting my family, which is really a huge concern for me now, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know who this is, or suspect? Uh, you know, it's it's hard to to say names. Uh, I th I think uh, we know people who are involved. Um, there could be a number of people, really poachers in the bush, who just really know that I, you know, I'm out there and I'm talking about this very openly. Mm. There's an element of corrupt individuals in the government yeah. who also are involved with these people. Mm. So I think they probably take advantage of of that situation just to to scare us off. And there's a new threat to the elephant's habitat with an even bigger financial lure, uranium. The government has already approved uranium mining in one national park. Which are very old in June, it was the, revealed the big game hunter Shaney uh, sold uranium is, rights in one of his hunting I blocks. I, I had one Australian company which, is, which was uh, uh, doing uh, uh, prospecting in uh, our hunting area. Perth-based Western Metals had agreed to pay him up to three million dollars, even though the uranium wasn't his to sell. The company has since been delisted. But that company did not go successful, and I think they have either stopped or have suspended the prospecting. But I think there's another company 
it was an Australian company and now it is a, a Russian company, I think. Yeah, well, if, if, if people actually looked into where their investments and their returns were coming from and what was, what was invested in, uh, and then they actually made ethical choices about how they invest that money, we might have a very different world. And I would encourage everybody to look at the sources of, uh, of their profits and their returns. Would you like a beer? Uh, yeah. Let me turn this down. No, me, me just water. Oh. Meanwhile, the trade in illegal ivory is becoming ever more brazen. After deciding we were genuine, our black marketers came to our hotel with ready-to-sell carvings. Okay, can, can you go through for me the prices of each one, please? Well, um, this one? Yeah, after carved, so... Yes, 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 like, like this one, it's like uh, $200. Yep. This one. Yeah, that's reasonable. This one, it's like $1,500. Uh, for the pair? For the pair, for the pair. because this is a pair here. Okay. Is it a hippo or...? No, this is an elephant. We had to emphasize we were not placing orders. We think there's a bit of heat happening, uh, too much patrol, so we don't want anything in the next month. Because if, uh, if, if he gets caught, then we have no supplier. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's hope for the poacher's victims. The calf we found searching for his mother turned out to be lucky. Instead of dying of thirst or being eaten by lions, he was taken by charter plane to an elephant orphanage. That's what it takes to save a baby when its mother's killed. This one is called Ngasha. Ngasha? Yes, yes. Do you know how her mother died? Yes, from poaching. The orphanage in the Kenyan capital Nairobi looks after calves until they're old enough to be returned to the wild. Edwin Lusici is the chief guide. Yes, they have to grow here first because we need to give them the first love and first attention care and uh, provide them with all the medication that they need and all the security that they need. They even have to deal with trauma. The old cliche that elephants don't forget is actually quite true when it comes to the loss of their mothers. After they're killed by poachers, the babies will be depressed and upset and confused for months. They will grieve remarkably like humans. It is an enormous undertaking to raise them, and it can all be undone by a single poacher's bullet. That elephant is called Faraja. He is approximately a year old. Well, I've reared 150 of them. So, and when you rear an elephant, it's a long-term project. It's not just one or two years. They're with us for at least 10. And all our elephants end up living normal lives again as wild elephants exposed to this problem. Daphne Sheldrick started the orphanage in 1977 after decades working with her husband David in Kenya's largest national park. Her life story is the stuff of Hollywood. There's even been talk of a film starring Nicole Kidman. But Daphne Sheldrick, who's now a dame, fears there'll be no happy ending for her elephants. I think elephants could disappear in the next 20 years. So when you think of a world without elephants? Well, fortunately, I don't think I'll be here to see that. But within the next 20 years, that could be the reality. I think it could. It's a terrible thing. But it's up to the international community to do something about it, isn't it? Children who come here each day still live in a world where elephants roam free. But time is fast running out to save the herds. By the time they have children, Africa's wild elephants could be gone forever. Oh